Hello. Hi, uh, how are you doing? Hope you're all hanging in there. I know I'm certainly trying to. For once, the cats are being sleepy and docile, so let's see if they'll stay that way throughout the duration of my taping this. So today what I wanna to talk about is the difference between ales and lagers, and they are terms that you've probably heard a billion times each. Um, and the distinction is really basic. Virtually all kinds of beer fall under those two labels, either ales or lagers. But the distinction is one that I actually kept forgetting. It's the kind of thing that I've had to look up a bunch of times and I keep kind of forgetting and losing my understanding of it because it's not always explained in a way that's really clear. So I think what I'm going to try and do is hopefully explain it in a way that makes sense and sticks in your memory. And hopefully you won't have to ask the same question a million times like I have. What you need to know is the basics of fermentation, which if you don't already have a loose understanding of that, when you put yeast in beer, it eats up the sugars and creates alcohol and carbonation. That's the basic science of it. That's the basic science of how anything is fermented. So the main difference, as anyone will tell you, between ales and lagers is the kind of yeast used. There are two main different varieties of yeast. Um, I'm not gonna bother telling you the long scientific name of them because you probably don't care, but I am going to include some links in the description if you want to get into the real nerdy nitty gritty bits and pieces of this in case you are interested in home brewing or just like scientific terms. So the main difference between ales and lagers is they are made with two different strains of yeast. The kind of yeast that's used in ales survives and does its, its work of fermenting at higher temperatures and in a shorter amount of time, as opposed to lager yeast, which will survive and thrive in lower temperatures and takes a longer amount of time to get that fermentation done. You might hear these referred to as top fermenting and bottom fermenting yeast. Ale would be top fermenting and lagers would be bottom fermenting, referring to where in the tank the fermentation happens. It's a little bit misleading because fermentation is actually happening throughout the whole body of the beer, um, but you can see it more prominently happening at the top of a tank with an ale versus at the bottom of the tank with a lager. This has been historically important because beer and bread making have historically gone hand in hand. And if you needed to harvest the yeast from the beer, it's easy enough to do it in an ale tank because you could just scoop it right off the top without disturbing the rest of the beer. So that's the main difference there. It's two different strains of yeast that behave differently, so they need to be treated differently. Lagers need to be made at lower temperatures, fermented for longer periods of time, and ales need to be fermented at slightly higher temperatures for shorter periods of time. Within those two distinctions, it creates some general differences, but it's important to know that all of this is painting in really, really broad strokes because all different kinds of ales and all different kinds of lagers can taste a wide variety of different ways. So if you ever hear someone say, I like ales or I hate ales, or I like lagers or I hate lagers, that's a really big generalization to make. Some of the different characteristics you tend to get from these different brewing processes are that ales tend to be higher in alcohol content and a little bit lower in sugar. Ales are higher in alcohol content and lower in sugar, and lagers tend to be a little bit higher in sugar and lower in alcohol content. It's important to know though that this is a really big generalization because some kinds of ales can be very sweet and very low alcohol. Lagers tend to be more reliable, more within a certain margin, but in a general sense, that's what happens just because of the way these two different yeasts behave and the different environments in which they can thrive. Lager yeast is generally considered more fragile, more delicate, so it needs those lower temperatures, it can't survive with too much alcohol, whereas ale yeast is hardier and can survive higher temperatures, higher alcohol content. Also, ales are more likely to end up with some haze in them, some sediment that may or may not be filtered out in the process, depending on, you know, brewer's preference, whereas lagers tend to be more clear from the beginning. So very generally speaking, lagers tend to be a little bit sweeter and smoother, whereas ales tend to be full of flavor and can be more sweet or spicy or fruity or whatever flavors it may contain, tend to be more of them, more powerful. Also because of the differences in the way the yeast behave, ales tend to be more hopped. Hops are used in lagers as well, but brewers tend to use more hops because of the hardiness of ale yeast. It can handle more of the hops going in and can benefit from more of that. So very, very generally speaking, your ales tend to be the beers that are more flavorful. It's often the kind of beers that brewers want to experiment with and do 
weird funky things. IPAs are ales, obviously India Pale Ales. Stouts and porters are ales. Sour beers, generally speaking, are ales. Gozos and Berliner Weisses. Whereas lagers tend to be fairly reliable beers that are generally simpler in taste, um, but when they're well done, they're super well done. So if you've had a good Pilsner or other kind of lager, you know this. There is an exception to all of this, and that's mixed fermentation beers. There are some beers that use a mix of ale and lager yeasts, but that is a minority of beers. Chances are anything you're drinking is going to be either an ale or a lager. And again, there's a lot of variety within these two categories, especially within ales. Things can be super bitter or sour or hoppy or whatever they may be, whereas lagers, generally speaking, tend to be a little bit smoother, a little bit sweeter, and generally a pretty balanced taste. The most common types of lagers that you'll see are Pilsners or Helles or Dunkel beers, lots of those traditional German styles. Ales can include Belgian Wits, any other kind of wheat beer, Berliners, Gozas, Amber Ales, Red Ales, things like that. It's a distinction that's important to know when it comes to beer because they're two very broad categories that determine an important part of how the beer is made. But honestly, it's a smaller part of describing a beer than you might think. It really just comes down to the kind of yeast used and how it has to be fermented because of what that kind of yeast can take. It really just comes down to that. So yeah, that's it. No big secrets or hard to remember twists or turns or anything there. And your important takeaways are that lagers tend to be sweet and smooth and generally a little bit lower in alcohol, whereas ales can taste all different ways, but tend to be a little bit less sweet, a little bit higher in alcohol and more flavorful. I hope this was a helpful explainer. I hope this means I won't have to look it up ever again after now that I've made this and I hope you won't have to either. Thank you for watching. Don't hesitate to let me know if there are any other beer topics that you'd like me to go over. No such thing as stupid questions. That's all I got. Thanks. Thank you, girl. Uh, oh, okay, I'll put you back to bed. And as always, just a reminder to support your local breweries. If you're bored at home and looking for something to do right now, it doesn't hurt to make an order from any small brewery that's in your area. I'm sure they have great stuff and would really appreciate your business. Have a good one.